I've tried recording my own demos, but it always just ends up sounding like crap. I think I can help you with that. Hey guys, welcome back to the Bald Shredder channel. So today, we're gonna talk about a pretty basic recording technique, but one that is crucial in getting that huge 80s guitar sound. Now I know a lot of guys out there are gonna say like, dude, I already know this, everybody knows this, this is basic, everybody does this, why are you even talking about it? But I want you to consider the fact that there are actually still guys out there that might not have this knowledge. Not everybody has spent the past 30 years recording their own songs, recording demos like I have and like a lot of you have. You know, those guys that played guitar back when they were a teenager, maybe in their early 20s, and then they put the guitar down for like a good 20 years. They got married, they had kids, they had careers, they had a lot of things that kind of got in the way of guitar playing. I've seen guys online commenting about this kind of stuff like, hey, I'm picking up the guitar again for the first time in like 25 years and I, I, I kind of need some advice and help in like getting started. And then there are guys that just like, over the years, they just never got around to recording stuff, recording demos. And now, because we live in an age where recording stuff on the computer not only sounds great, but it's really cheap and like easy to do and anybody can do it. So guys, if you've never recorded your own stuff, I'm gonna really encourage you to like get into doing that. Start doing that, try doing it. Not only is it a lot of fun, but you can learn a lot and it's just great for your own like songwriting, practicing. It's just, there's so many benefits to doing it. And now with the technology and stuff being so cheap, there's kind of like no reason not to do it these days. All you really need is an interface. You know, that's the little box where, for guys that don't know, the cable goes from your guitar into this little box. And then that little box plugs into your, com into your computer. And then your signal is gonna go into your amplifier simulation software, which you can get for free. Of course, there are ones that you can buy, but there's so much free stuff out there, guys. So you can get the amp simulation software for free, and you can also get the recording software for free. So once you've got those things, you've got your interface, you've got your amp simulation software, you've got your recording software, you're ready to start recording. All right, so you're all hooked up, you got everything ready to go. How do you get that big, full sounding, like, stadium 80s hard rock guitar sound. And yes, you know, uh, uh, we have other things to consider, other factors like the pickups in your guitar, uh, what you have the amp controls set to, what kind of effects are you adding, all that stuff. That's important too, but that's not what we're talking about today. The main idea here, guys, is that when you record your rhythm part, your rhythm guitar part, your power chords, whatever, you record it, you've got it done, then you're gonna go back and you're gonna record that same exact part again, like in sync with the first one. So basically you're recording the same track together two different times on two different tracks. And you cannot just copy and paste it. Like you might think, okay, I recorded it once and it's the computer, I can highlight that track, I can hit copy and then I can just paste it onto a new track and now I've got the same rhythm guitar on two different tracks. No, that's not gonna work for what we're trying to accomplish here. And the reason that doesn't work, guys, is because we're trying to get like a stereo sound. We're gonna end up getting a stereo sound left and right in the speakers. And if you just copy and paste the exact same track, it will be an exact copy. There will be no differences at all. And if you do that exact copy, and then you put one on the left side and you put one on the right side, there's no stereo effect, okay? The stereo effect comes from the fact that when you record the part the second time, and you think like, okay, I'm playing that rhythm exactly like I played it the first time. It sounds exactly the same. I can't tell any difference. I mean, it sounds perfect to me, but because we are not machines, because we are not computers, when you recorded that track a second time, there are minute little differences, little teeny tiny things that we might not even notice when we listen back to it. Just differences in like, you, you hit a certain chord with maybe less pressure on the pick, or you went to the next chord like a microsecond behind or sooner than on the first track that you recorded. And it's those little tiny differences that when you listen to it, 
left and right, you pan it into stereo, that's what gives it that huge, big 80s guitar sound. All right, so let's go back to the recording, right? You record your first guitar track, you've got it recorded. What you wanna do then is go to the pan control. Pan, that's the left and the right speakers. So take that track and pan it 100%, all the way to the left, all the way. Then you go to the second track that you recorded and you pan that one all the way to the right, 100%. We call that hard right. So you're panning the two different tracks, hard left and hard right. Now to demonstrate this, guys, I'm gonna play you a few clips where like one track, not panned, and then we'll do one track pan and then two tracks, and you're really gonna hear the difference. Now, I do think it's important, guys, that you're listening to this on some kind of device where it's in stereo, you can hear the left and the right, uh, I don't know how well it's gonna come across on a cell phone, so if you've got headphones or earbuds, or if you're at home watching on your computer and you've got speakers, you're gonna get the best effect from that. Okay, so the first example, guys, this is a guitar rhythm, one track only, and the pan is set dead center, so the same track is coming out equally from the left and the right. Okay, not bad, right? It's got pretty good sound. It's got that amp sound that I want. Sounds good, Got sounds like 80s. Uh, but let's see what it sounds like if I take, again, just that one track and I pan it all the way to the left, hard left. So now you're hearing that same guitar track that we heard the first time and it's only coming out of the left speaker. So it's kinda, it sounds weaker, right? Because you're not getting the full signal out of both speakers, it's only coming out of one speaker and it might sound a little weird, like well, there's something missing over there. So now, let's listen to both tracks. Now remember, both of these tracks were recorded separately. I recorded the first one and then I went back and overdubbed the second track and now I'm gonna pan them hard left and hard right, and that's gonna give us the stereo effect. Check it out. Okay, so did you hear the difference? Do you see how much better that sounds and how that sounds like 80s hard rock, right? All right guys, now I'm gonna do all three samples again, like quickly in succession without me talking in between, and so you can really hear the difference between the three. So now that's crunchy rhythm guitar, but what about other kind of guitar parts? Would you ever do that, let's say like on a clean acoustic guitar part? And the answer is yeah, why not? Check it out. Okay, so we've done the distorted rhythm guitar. We've done the clean acoustic guitar. What about like a guitar solo or like a guitar melody or whatever? Would I ever do it for something like that? And the answer again is yes.
All right, guys, now I think it's important for you to hear that because it's a melody. You wanna hear like in the context of the whole song. So I'm gonna play that whole thing, that whole section right there, the entire song with the drums and the rhythm guitar and everything. So you can really hear like how it sounds because you might be going like, mm, I don't know how that would sound in a song. So here it is. So I don't do that very often, guys, on melodies and solos. Usually I just do like one track and it's dead center. But occasionally, you know, I, I get an idea in my head and I, I kind of want it to sound a certain way, like in that song. And I think it just, it adds to it. It makes it sound a little different, makes it sound cool. Especially if it's something that's like not super fast or shreddy and it's more like a simple melody. And I can, you know, I can record the second track and play along to it and be like pretty, accurate and pretty close to the same thing and then get that really cool stereo effect. So it's not something I would do all the time, but like any of this stuff, you know, you experiment, you play around with it. Sometimes you record a different track, so uh, rhythm wise. So it might not always be like, I'm gonna duplicate the exact same rhythm part and pan them hard left and right. Uh, and this is common for a lot of bands like Def Leppard, they'll do a, a certain track, you know, on the left side and then the track on the right side will be something completely different, but they blend together really well. So experiment, try different things. You know, you might even add like a third track. Maybe you'll have uh, a track hard left, another track hard right, could be the same thing or something different. And then you've got like a third track that's in the middle, that's center. And uh, it's, it just depends on what sounds good and what, what doesn't sound good and what serves the song. So play around with it, try different things, and see what you like and what you're happy with. All right, guys, that's it for today. So I, I hope some of you guys learned something. Uh, maybe this was new information for you, maybe not. But still, you know, get out there. Get on your computer. Start recording stuff. Start writing stuff. Start playing your own stuff, not just the covers. Uh, it's... You're gonna love it, I think. That's my advice. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.